Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, Hudson County View, live at Uncut. I'm your host, not always a saint, but rarely a sitter, and has all the qualities of a certified winner, John R. Heinis. And today we're going to talk about the latest and greatest in Hudson County news, as we always do. So first and foremost, I have sitting next to me Hoboken First Ward Councilman Mike DeFusco. So we have a lot to talk about in terms of COVID-19 preparedness, 770 Jackson Street, payment in lieu of taxes uh, program and where the future of that lies, as well as plenty more, I'm sure. 2021, of course, will be a topic there as well. And uh, we're also going to speak about what's going on uh, statewide. Governor Phil Murphy, as we speak, is continuing to give his coronavirus briefing, you know, of course, something he's done since March. And there is an update about non-essential businesses. So that's something that we're going to discuss. Uh, on a related note, we're going to talk about Jersey City Mayor Stephen Fulop opposing any uh, bar and restaurant restrictions up to this point, and it looks like he's sticking to his guns. So we're going to also detail some of that. We're also going to have a conversation, briefly at least, about a, uh, a four-legged friend spotted in the Mile Square City yesterday, something you don't see every day. So we're going to have a quick uh, maybe 30 seconds or so on that. And we're also going to have a whole lot more after we have a word from our sponsors. Burns Brothers Memorials, Monuments, and Markers, 787 Tunley Avenue, Jersey City. Hudson County's only monument maker, serving all faiths and cemeteries. Design studio and launch inventory on site. Cemetery inscriptions and custom orders welcome. Burns Brothers Memorials, Monuments, and Markers, 787 Tunley Avenue, just south of Seacorkers Road. Craftsmanship that will last for all eternity. Burns Brothers, Jersey City, Albert H. Hopper, North Arlington. Visit us on the net. Consumer Carpets, 3408 Kennedy Boulevard in the Jersey City Heights, your one-stop store for residential and commercial floor treatments. Carpeting, linoleum, tiles, laminates, hardwood floors, area rugs, remnants, all major brands, all in stock. Free estimates, same-day installation. Consumer Carpets, it's savings, selection, installation. Credit cards and debit cards accepted. Financing available. Consumer Carpets, price to fit your budget, installation to fit your schedule. On the net at ConsumerCarpets.com. Consumer Carpets, Jersey City, 201-792-2712. Good Friends Self Storage in North Bergen, New Jersey is a fully climate controlled facility equipped with state-of-the-art security, packing supplies, a refer friend program, and multiple loading docks convenient for commercial use. Located just off of Route 3 at 4301 Tunnelly Avenue, Route 1 and 9. Call 201-867-2444 or visit us on the web today. Good friend self-storage. Let us be your good friend. Hudson County View, live at Uncut. John R. Heinis, and as I just mentioned, I'm joined today with Hoboken First Ward Councilman Mike DeFusco. Um, Councilman, thanks for joining me again. Thanks for having me, John. All right, so first of all, the, I think an issue that has been uh, permeating throughout the city council for a few weeks, several weeks really, is the 77 Jackson Street payment in lieu of taxes. Obviously, you're well aware this agreement was approved for about four years ago, and uh, we've been trying to reach common ground. Obviously, that hasn't happened yet. So just tell me where this stands in your mind and where you'd like to see it go. Yeah, no, absolutely. So in the summer of 2016, the city council, at the urging of Mayor Don Zimmer at the time, approved a payment in lieu of taxes for uh, one of the largest buildings in all of Hoboken. Uh, part of that pilot agreement uh, basically agreed to take a portion of the payment in lieu of taxes uh, and put it towards the public school system. Um, uh, shortly before a council meeting about three weeks ago, um, as has become standard for this administration, um, uh, we received a memo from the mayor uh, that said the, uh, the payment in lieu of tax money would not be going to public charter schools, but only to the public district schools. Um, it didn't give the council a whole ton of time to react, so that, that evening uh, we put forth a very simple resolution uh, that basically urged the administration to work with the council, work with all public schools uh, parents uh, to find a way to um, uh, proportionately uh, distribute the, these funds. Um, what occurred after that was unfortunate. Um, again, this administration uh, only thrives through uh, division and creating uh, a polarization of not just the city council, but also of our electorate. So what we found was uh, um, an, uh, a campaign of, of misinformation uh, that started with those very close to the administration uh, trying to uh, explain away how the charter schools and the district schools, the district public schools, uh, we're uh, each in their own way trying to, um, to, um, to take the money. Uh, and the facts were all over the place. Um, and, uh, and it's an unfortunate uh, thing to see. Uh, families, neighbors, uh, public school families all uh, attacking one another, attacking the city council, 
people uh, and to have a mayor uh, sit quietly uh, and watch, uh, watch from afar as this level of division occurs. So, yeah, I mean, that's, that's a pretty in-depth synopsis. The only thing I guess I would add is just there were two resolutions, right? I mean, the first one was introduced by Fourth Ward Councilman Ruben Ramos, sure. and he was hoping to see about an 80-20 split between the Board of Ed and the charter schools. Obviously, there was no vote. Yep. Then we saw Fifth Ward Councilman Phil Cohen come back and try to do 100% to the Board of Ed. Once again, there was no vote. So how do you see this thing getting resolved? Well, what was most surprising that first night was the, the Board of Education attorney came out and said, listen, we want to work with all parties to understand the issues and to, uh, to, you know, to, you know, to, to come to the negotiating table for an amicable uh, resolution. Uh, to that, Councilman Ramos, my, my close colleague, said, that sounds like a good plan. I'm going to withdraw my resolution. Um, and, um, and then unsurprisingly, uh, the, uh, the following meeting, uh, Councilman Cohen and uh, uh, Councilwoman Jabour uh, put forth a resolution, again, claiming all of these funds should go to the public district schools, even though the Board of Education attorney clearly said, we want to work with all families to find a solution. This is the dysfunctional politics that we have in Hoboken right now. We need solutions, we need compromise, we need to find a middle ground where we're growing our educational uh, funding, where we're growing our municipal government in productive ways. And that's not what we have under Mayor Bala. Uh, but again, this is a mayor that only survives and only succeeds when there are arguments uh, going on in this city. Uh, it's time for that to stop. Well, look, on that point, as far as the uh, executive leadership here at the Mile Square, uh, I've, it's not a secret to you that a lot of people have been anticipating you guys will have a rematch next year in the mayoral contest. So where do you stand? Are you running, thinking about running, not running? Any thoughts on that you could tell us today? Listen, have I ever really stopped ex uh, expressing the thoughts, the beliefs uh, of what caused me to run for mayor in 2017? Uh, my organization has never been stronger. Um, we have uh, we've gotten stronger. Um, I have uh, grown as a politician. I um, have used the last three years to uh, listen to more people, to further develop um, ideas that were fledgling in 2017. Um, so uh, my goals for 2021 uh, is to see a dysfunctional administration out. Would I like to be that candidate? Um, I am looking at all options, uh, professionally, personally, um, and um, I'm coming close to a decision that I think is going to uh, be the best one, not only for, uh, for the city of Hoboken, but for uh, a, a majority of the city that wants to see change uh, come to the mile square. So would it be fair to say at this time that whether or not you're on the ballot, you will not be supporting the incumbent in this one? <laughs> Listen, the mayor has never proven to be a, a, compromise, a compromiser. He has never proven to do anything but garner headlines um, and create division within, um, within the city council. Um, we deserve somebody that's going to bring uh, uh, all ends of Hoboken together. Uh, old Hoboken, new Hoboken, uh, whether you have a family or whether you're trying to start one, uh, whether you own a business or whether you want to start a business, Hoboken deserves a mayor that's going to worry about local issues. Not going to draw something from the national level, take it down to Hoboken and create divisions. Um, listen, I, I think that we still have situations uh, that have gone unresolved in terms of quality of life. Our streets are a mess. Uh, our stores are, uh, are looking for guidance on zoning uh, issues that the mayor is unwilling to provide them. Uh, we have, um, we have a gross misspending by this administration that caused a 9.8% tax increase uh, at the hands of politically connected contracts uh, and special interests. Those money interests have not gone away since the mayor won his election in th uh, three years ago uh, by a narrow uh, 400 plus votes over me, those interests have only grown. The Mile Square is squarely being viewed as a profit center for uh, not just big, big, big business, but also special interests in the tech field as well. Uh, we just approved a contract on the city council last week that gives away space on our public right of way to uh, AT&T. Uh, On that point, Council, we've we got to take a quick uh, break with our sponsor, but hold that thought. We'll be right back. The Jersey City Medical Center. You know it for its award-winning, life-saving ambulance service. It's also your health hub with health and wellness locations staffed with certified professionals all through Hudson County. The Jersey City Medical Center, here to help you with your healthy, here when you need us the most. The Jersey City Medical Center. Visit us on the net to learn more. Jersey City Medical Center, Robert Wood Johnson, Barnabas Health Facility. 
Let's be healthy together. Newport, the luxury waterfront community on the Hudson River, offers a quality of life you deserve in 10 high-rise rental towers with amenities such as the on-site Newport Path Subway, light rail and ferry service, Newport Town Square, three playgrounds, dog run, upscale restaurants, retail giants like Sears, JCPenney, Macy's, and Target. Morton Williams Supermarket is just outside your front door. A health and fitness club, spa, skating rink, and medical facilities are also on site. NewportNJ.com Enjoy the New York skyline from Newport Town Square. Manhattan is just one path stop away or quick ride through the Holland Tunnel. Nursery and private elementary schools all on site. 12 screen movie theater at the Newport Center Mall. Want to visit Newport? Stay at the Western or Marriott Hotel. Go to NewportNJ.com for details. Newport has luxurious towers, great restaurants, shopping, New York skyline views, schools, playgrounds, a marina and yacht club, gym, spa, fine wine, fine living. It's incredible. It's you. NewportNJ.com. Newport. Live like you want. That's a county view live. But I've got Chad. Our height is still here with Hoboken First Ward Councilman Mike DeFusco. Uh, so, Councilman, sorry we had to cut you yeah. off briefly, but uh, finish your point on AT&T, please. Our streets are valuable. These are places that, um, that are our backyards. These are places that uh, we need to share. Um, we need to share them with bikes, with pedestrians, with cars, um, and we should not be sharing them with big tech providers that are going to overtake our streets uh, for the, pro the, the profit of, um, uh, of, a, of a privatized big business. Um, so it's disappointing to see the administration continue to back big business over uh, the everyday uh, quality of life uh, of our citizenry. All right, Councilman. Now, one thing, obviously, that has dominated the 2020 news cycle, obviously, is COVID-19. Now, the administration has gotten high marks from, uh, really across the country. I mean, because whether it was implementing one of the first uh, closures of in-person dining, whether it was, uh, you know, implementing the new curfew now and everything in between, obviously, you're intimately aware. Mm -hmm. I mean, what would you say about their response to the public health emergency? I mean, would you say that it has been up to par? Yeah, the, the city government as a whole, uh, and when I say that it's the mayor's office as well as the city council, has been on the cutting edge and the leading edge of using science to, uh, to, to, to hold back the COVID-19 pandemic, at least in Hoboken, as best as we can for a mile square city. Um, we have worked uh, together to ensure that our policies are um, uh, our protection, uh, our protecting our citizenry, uh, and I'm very proud of the the work that we've done over the past six months um, to uh, to make sure our businesses open up, uh, opened up again through our streeteries and parklets, which I was which I was proud to sponsor with Council President Jen Giatino, um, and making sure that enforcement was uh, was leading was leading the day, and contact tracing uh, was uh, was was being pursued. Uh, that's the way we're going to conquer this virus by wearing masks, by sanitizing our hair, by helping businesses expand in safe ways um, and uh, I couldn't have been prouder to work with my colleagues on the council as well as Mayor Bala to, to make that happen. All right so as I mentioned at the top of the program Councilman uh, Governor Murphy's doing his coronavirus briefing and he yeah. revealed two things. First he said that and this is less than an hour ago so I haven't had a chance to talk to anyone really except for you mm -hmm. um, and the, so but the point is this so he said that the time when cities, municipalities could issue their own regulations for COVID are gone. You know, we're going back to the executive order mm -hmm. way of things. Uh, however, he did have one caveat later where he said that he will allow each city and municipality to decide whether or not they want to do an 8 p.m. curfew for not essential businesses. So what do you think is best for Hoboken going forward? Obviously, it's not your sole call or anything, but still, I'd like to hear your opinion. Listen, I walk around my downtown neighborhood, the first ward, and I see certain businesses not, uh, not following correct social distancing. Um, and I phone the enforcement, uh, the, the enforcement uh, agencies uh, in Hoboken, um, and you know, you know, uh, location by location, we take care of it. Hoboken still can do a better job with enforcement. I don't think that um, necessarily saying that the virus stops at eight o'clock or ten o'clock or midnight is necessarily the right uh, is the right direction. I support the governor. I think it giving the given the uh, the authority to the individual cities is um, is a good regional strategy. But the cities, including Hoboken, need to enforce. 
we need to be very strict when we see people that are in a bar in downtown Hoboken partying on a football Sunday uh, like it was Mardi Gras. That is what needs to stop. Um, so I think that all businesses in Hoboken have done a yeoman's job at trying to get closer. We can do a better job. I am for stricter enforcement. I couldn't tell you that I am absolutely in favor of um, 8 o'clock versus 10 o'clock, uh, but I am in favor of making sure enforcement is, um, is ratcheted up as we get uh, closer and closer to a very cold, very dark winter where cases have already proven to be going up at an uh, exponential rate. So on the topic of enforcement, you know, the council already uh, recently approved, I should say, this $1,000 house party uh, on the books now, which means if over 25 occupants in a home and there's probable cause, the police can write a summons yeah. anywhere from 250 to $1,000. So do you think this is going to be helpful in the long term and why or why not? I mean, I know you voted in favor of this, yeah. but still. House parties have always been a byproduct of our um, of our very active nightlife scene, whether it was with SantaCon or whether it was with the St. Patrick's Day Parade before that. When you close bars, where do the people go? They just don't dissipate. And when you close bars, young people tend to go back to their houses and they have, you know, they open up a couple bottles and all of a sudden it's two o'clock in the morning and neighbors are complaining. So I think that house parties uh, within COVID are, uh, potential, have the potential of being a super spreader event. Um, uh, outside of COVID, we need to continue to crack down on house parties to make sure that the quality of life um, all across Hoboken is maintained. Um, I supported that, um, that, that, that change, which was, let's be honest here, it was simply uh, codifying the governor's executive order um, so uh, although it was a, a, a ceremonial or symbolic action of the council, I was proud to lend my support to it. But now it's about the enforcement. Yeah, crack down the house parties, crack down on the bars, make sure that we are maintaining six foot distance on the streets. These are the things, the simple common sense um, human things that we can do to one another to protect each other from this terrible scourge. Um, and um, all administrative enforcement units that report into the mayor need to step it up because if there's a time to stop the spread, it's right now. And uh, I think we'll probably let you go on this point, Councilman. Sure. But so the administration, people from the administration have intimated that you've had a lax attitude during this pandemic and, uh, you know, just haven't taken it as seriously as they have. Yeah. Uh, no one said it out, right? But you yeah. know what yeah, I'm referencing. Yeah. So what, what's your opinion or what's your reaction to that? It's, uh, it's, it's, it's more political nonsense. Um, uh, a little bit backstory on me. Last March, I underwent a, a, a pretty substantial uh, medical procedure impacting my heart. I am an at-risk population. Um, I uh, am very lucky to have uh, gotten stronger over the last six months, but um, should I, you know, should I have uh, or should I uh, contract COVID-19, um, it would not be a good situation for me. So having a lax attitude uh, personally for me is not an option. Uh, my father, also in, in the aging population, um, to see him, I need to also bring about common sense uh, uh, measures to ensure his safety. Uh, my young nieces as well. Um, there's a political class that likes to attack me and it's humorous to watch because they know that the only way that they're going to win is through a negative uh, conversation about who I am. But the truth and the facts hopefully shine through to those, uh, those that know me and those that um, have voted for me and, uh, and support my, uh, my actions on the city council. Thank you very much, Councilman. Thank Always you, a pleasure. Ladies and gentlemen, thanks for watching. We're not done yet, but we are going to take another break. We'll be right back. Most women who give birth recover without problems, but any woman can have complications after the birth of a baby. Learn the post-birth warning signs, such as fever, headache, chest pain, shortness of breath, increased bleeding, or thoughts of hurting yourself or someone else. Knowing these can save your life or the life of someone that you love. Trust your instincts. If you feel something is wrong, call and get evaluated by your healthcare provider. If your symptoms get worse or you do not hear back from your physician, call 911 or go to the nearest emergency room. RWJ Barnabas Health. Let's be healthy together. Pen and Pencil Properties, Jersey City. Shape in the workplace with state-of-the-art office spaces that address your company desires. Building residences that define your home environment adjacent to all modes of transportation with on-site parking available. The right address, the right lease. Call 201-521-9000 or visit online at panapintoproperties.com. Panapinto Properties, building Jersey City for everyone. Hudson County View live at Uncut, John R. Heides. 
like I said, we still have a few uh, I news items that we wanted to recap before calling it a day. So first of all, I think the most notable on our list is Jersey City Assemblywoman Angela McKnight, of course, of the 31st District, revealed just yesterday that she tested positive after her daughter contracted the virus. So first and foremost, uh, as I did on my Twitter, I just wanted to wish her and her family members a speedy recovery. But with that, let me give you the details of what, uh, what's going on here. So the Assemblywoman sent out a statement last night, and this is what it said. Early Monday morning, my daughter, Andrea, was not feeling well to the point where we made the decision to take her to the hospital. Later that day, we learned she was positive for COVID-19. My family and I were all tested, and today I was informed that I, too, have tested positive for COVID-19. I am currently quarantining at home as I have symptoms and need to rest. I have begun the contact tracing process to notify everyone who I have come into contact with. And she also noted, which is a little interesting, that her family has practice social distancing, has practiced wearing masks and, you know, other best health practices from the U.S. Centers for Disease Control regarding COVID-19. And yet, you know, they still uh, had at least two family members who tested positive here. But nevertheless, she advises her constituency, her friends and her other family members to keep up the same. And she added, the reality is the number of cases in our state are drastically rising. We have to do all we can to stop the spread. My family and I will continue to quarantine for 14 days per the CDC guidelines. Please remember to take, to continue to take the necessary precautions. So that's basically the gist of that. Uh, she uh, actually posted on her Facebook page a little earlier today that her daughter was in the ICU, uh, but thankfully she's been released. So it looks like that they're well on their road to a uh, healthy recovery, full recovery. Uh, you know, this is the, actually the first member of the Hudson County delegation that tested positive for COVID-19. You guys may recall back in March, Assemblywoman Angelica Jimenez of the 33rd Legislative District tested positive as well. Uh, so, you know, with cases on the rise, I imagine we're going to see more and more lawmakers, you know, knock on wood. I mean, hopefully there's no others, but probability speaking, we're going to continue to see more lawmakers testing positive for the virus as they have to, you know, go to Trenton, as they have to attend events, uh, you know, meet with constituents, so on and so forth. Now, as of yesterday, Phil Murphy, uh, of course, the governor said that it was devastating to have 3,877 new confirmed coronavirus cases statewide. So also keep in mind that he noted there was a computer glitch that may have caused a delay in the reporting totals for Monday, where the number of new cases disclosed was at 2,075. So overall, Hudson County has tallied 25,393 positive cases and 1,381 related deaths, both are the third most by county in the state of New Jersey, according to our State Department of Health. So. On this point, I think this is as good a time as any to talk about uh, Jersey City Mayor Stephen Fulop. Again, I mentioned at the top of the program that he was reacting to uh, the new curfew and uh, restaurant restriction rules, and he's still against it. Uh, and this was just as of two days ago, I believe. And he said the governor has said, and local data as well, this was on Twitter, that the recent spread is happening due to small gatherings at people's homes with friends and families. Closing restaurants slash bars at a random time will only push people more towards those house gatherings that are the spreaders. Secondly, my concern with the holidays around the quarter, this is going to trigger more restaurants, letting go of a large number of employees, no question, and we're already seeing more demand at food pantries. So we saw last week, I'm sure most of you recall, if not all of you, that Mayor Stephen Fulop seemed to be at odds with uh, Hoboken Mayor Ravi Bala, who, as we just spoke about with Councilman DeFusco, had a new curfew put into place at midnight for the bars and restaurants on the Bio Square. And uh, that was after Newark had already implemented an 8 p.m. curfew for non-essential businesses. And that actually the morning of our program last week, we saw Patterson enact the same thing that Hoboken did, which was a midnight bar and restaurant curfew. So in reaction to that, we saw Mayor Fulop coming out with this series of tweets saying that he does not think that closing restaurants is early is going to accomplish anything, and he's doubling down on that position here, even after the governor has endorsed that position. As I just mentioned with Councilman DeFusco a few minutes ago, he does now, the governor that is leaving it up to cities and municipalities to decide whether or not they are going to choose to close their non-essential businesses at 8 p.m. So it doesn't look like Jersey City is going to be on that list, whether or not Hoboken joins or anyone else at Hudson remains to be seen. Obviously, we're going to be on top of it. I'm going to be reaching out to a number of officials after we get off the air today and following up as soon as possible. And we'll keep you guys updated on our website, on our Facebook, on our Twitter page, so on and so forth. So with that, that's our COVID-19 update for the time being. We're going to take one more break. We'll be right back.
You know those times when you need to see the doctor, but you just can't get to the doctor? So where do you go? Go to the App Store, download the Telemed app from RWJ Barnabas Health, and you see the doctor right away. From any mobile device, whenever you want, wherever you are. Quality care, no appointment necessary. The doctor is online when you download the Telemed app. Don't you feel better already? RWJ Barnabas Health. Let's be healthy together. Stevens Jersey City Ford, located right off of NJ 440 North. Across the Hudson Mall is your one stop for all your automotive needs. Check out Ford's latest models like the 2020 Ford Fusion with its stylish looks and hybrid options, or the unparalleled high performance 2020 Ford Mustang. The 2020 Ford F-150 Raptor is ready for those rugged off-road terrains with trail control. Need a mid-sized truck for your towing and hauling? The 2020 Ford Ranger will deliver. The 2020 Ford Escape is a luxury SUV that was made for comfort and adventure on the go. Returning is the Ford's legendary Bronco, which takes you back to the true meaning of off-roading. They are now available for pre-order in our showroom or on our website. Let us help you find your next vehicle. Stevens Jersey City Ford, 201-432-7272. Hudson County View, live and uncut, John R. Hytus. So this is more of a public service announcement than anything else, but ever since the uh, Motor Vehicle Commissions, of course, we still call them the DMVs, across the state reopened, there's been a lot of issues. People have been camping outside, uh, and yeah, it's just been a real bear to deal with, to put it nicely. Well, here, I just wanted to let you guys know that the Bayonne DMV is going to be closed till at least November 24th. A, an employee tested positive. The New Jersey Motor Vehicle Commission tweeted yesterday, breaking Bayonne Licensing Center is closed due to an employee testing positive for COVID-19 and will reopen Tuesday, November 24th. Pretty straightforward. But uh, again, just for anyone that was looking for services there, that will not be an option for, again, well, now it would be 13 days at a minimum. So also worth noting is that this isn't the only time this has happened in Hudson County. We saw the Bayonne facility close last month, and then at the end of September, the Jersey City facility closed just before. So unfortunately, this seems to be a, an ongoing trend with the DMVs throughout New Jersey. So just wanted to make sure that everybody is aware of that. Before we talk about uh, a rare non-political story here, we're going to talk actually about the Hoboken Fire Department encountering a uh, young male deer in Maxwell Place Park, right, uh, right off the shoreline there. So this was something, uh, you know, I saw some interesting pictures on Twitter and uh, that obviously got me curious. You know, you don't see a buck hanging out in the mile square every day. And, you know, I inquired further with some of uh, the Hoboken's local officials and I ended up eventually speaking to Fire Chief Brian Cribbins. And it turned out they actually did a, a minor water rescue. And what I mean by that is the buck was uh, hanging out in the shore area, in the shallow water, I guess. And the fire department showed up and helped uh, shepherd him back to the shore before he went off about his way. And the chief explained that this was due to a uh, public safety concern and they got a variety of calls on this. So just briefly, wanted to clue you in. And uh, the chief told me that people were concerned about the safety of the deer who wanted to be sure it was kept out of the way of ferries and other boat traffic. And he said the firefighters arrived at the park at 1.03 p.m. after receiving a number of calls, though noted that the animal, quote, didn't appear to be in distress end quote, as a fireboat helped guide him back to the shore where he eventually went back, quote, safely on his way. So a very uh, interesting story out of Hoboken for my animal lovers out there. But on that, we're actually going to call it a day. Uh, we're going to uh, be back next week. Thank you everyone for tuning in as always. Stay safe. Have a great day.